This lecture in Climate and Earth 401 is about the thermal wind, and it is the mathematical derivation of the thermal wind equation. We will be starting from the equations of motion and pressure coordinates, which will have the horizontal momentum equation, the continuity equation, and the thermodynamic equation. And these equations have been scaled for large-scale mid-latitude flow. In addition to these three equations, we will need the hydrostatic equation. And we saw in an earlier lecture that the hydrostatic equation is the scaled vertical momentum equation. That is, the hydrostatic balance is so strong that it overwhelms the acceleration of the vertical wind, dW dt. We will be starting from one of the balances that come from these scaled equations, namely the geostrophic wind. The geostrophic wind is given here, and it's represented by u sub g is equal to minus 1 over f d phi dy, and v sub g is equal to 1 over f d phi dx. The question arises, what is the tactic, or how do we look at differences in the vertical? How do we look at vertical behavior? The geostrophic wind is in the horizontal plane, and we need to be able to understand what is the vertical behavior of the atmosphere as well. One of the ways that we look at differences in the vertical is, in fact, subtraction. Take a difference. Notice, take a difference, looking at differences. And when we take a difference of a quantity, then we are likely to be led toward, in calculus, the process of taking a derivative. Therefore, what we're going to do is we are going to take a vertical derivative, and we're going to take a vertical derivative of the geostrophic wind. That's what's represented here, where we've taken the U term and the V term. We are using pressure as our height coordinate. And therefore, we're going to take the partial of u with respect to p and the partial of v with respect to p. The f is a constant with respect to pressure under all circumstances. Then we can change the order of the operation of the derivatives. And we get d by dy of d phi dp and d by dx of d phi dp. At this point, we should be recognizing that d phi dp is the hydrostatic relationship and is equal to minus RT over P, where R is the gas constant, big T is temperature, and P is pressure. We can then take and substitute for d phi dp this relationship, and what we get is that the vertical gradient of the geostrophic wind, represented here and here, is related to the horizontal gradients of temperature. This is explicitly shown here, that we are linking the horizontal gradient of temperature with the vertical gradient of the wind. We can manipulate this equation further by rearranging the variables. We can pull out the r because it is a constant. f is a constant with respect to p. Therefore, we have this constant out front. And we're also going to pull out p, recognizing that p is an independent variable. It's a coordinate. Hence, by definition, the x and y derivatives are taken with p constant. Therefore, we can pull the pressure out in the same way that we pull out r and move it to the other side, which is what we've done in this equation. Then we end up in vector form that the partial of the vector wind with respect to log p, because we are again now going to recognize this p dp as representative of taking your variable and transferring it over to log p, is equal to minus r over f k cross del p of t, where this del p is representing the gradient on constant pressure surfaces. The equations presented in this slide and the previous slide are the thermal wind equation. To get some intuitive feel of the thermal wind, what's drawn here are constant pressure surfaces. On this side over here on the left, it's colder. On this side over here on the right, it's warmer. The thickness of the layers, that is the distance between the pressure surfaces, 
are going to be related to temperature, and this will cause a tilt with height. What I have done here is to draw two representative arrows for measurement of different sizes, and what I've done now is taken those two arrows and placed them over here in the diagram to make it clear that there's more distance between pressure surfaces here than here, and the net result of that is that there is a gradient of geopotential on a constant pressure surface. I want to explicitly point out that we have used a number of aspects of our previous work in this derivation. We are trying to link a physical and intuitive meaning to mathematical manipulations. One of the examples of that is using the vertical derivative to investigate the behavior in the vertical. We've used the meaning of independent variables to pull that pressure out of the derivative. With that, we're now seeing some of the advantages, some of the potential simplicities that come from using pressure as a vertical coordinate. This derivation also relies on our scaling arguments. It relies on the geostrophic approximation that came from those scaling arguments. It relies on the hydrostatic equation that came from those scaling arguments. And we have introduced this idea of the thickness which we studied earlier when we were looking at the derivation of geopotential and what does geopotential mean. And with that, I have completed an introduction to the thermal wind focused on the mathematical derivation of the term.